Caitlin, thank you so much for setting that stage. So now you have that patient in front of you and some of the information you were looking for, be it PET CT, because insurance said yes, or uh, low dose CT. How are you using this information in planning their treatment? Can you walk us through your treatment paradigm and how are you putting in few buckets and what next for you? Sure. So now we've identified someone and diagnosed them with multiple myeloma. Kind of as part of that in um, RISS, the Revised International Staging System, we have taken the FISH data from the bone marrow biopsy and really quantified in a very objective way. That's where your beta-2 microglobulin, your LDH, your albumin, and your FISH abnormalities can all be put into a very objective quantification to understand, is this patient high risk or is this patient standard risk? Now, I'll tell you that in 2024, we don't have a great understanding of what we should be doing differently for high risk patients versus standard risk patients. I think all of us think and assume we need to push a little harder for our high risk patients, but to date, not a lot of trials have specifically evaluated that 15%, let's say, of high risk myeloma patients in prospective trials that help us understand we should be doing this differently. So we extrapolate from from kind of bigger trials that say, this is what your average myeloma patient, you know, is responding to and kind of do the best we can. So when I first see a patient, I make some assignments to say your high risk, your standard risk, and then we talk about a treatment. I think it's important to understand that myeloma is a, is not a one size fits all. And that is true about your risk stratification, but also about the patient who's sitting in front of you. I think you both know, just like I do, a patient who walks in is very different from the patient who walks in next with newly diagnosed myeloma. They could be 40, they could be 80, they could be high risk, they could be fit, they could be frail. So you really need to tailor your treatment approach based on a lot of those specific characteristics. Basically now, since we have established that itself, where we can in fact go aggressive route or transplant eligible versus transplant ineligible, how would you now tailor the treatment once you've decided where this person fits in? Fantastic. I think Historically, we've we have had these patients walk in the front door very symptomatic from their myeloma, and we kind of as a as a gestalt or a gut reaction immediately assign them as being transplant eligible or transplant ineligible. And I think that should be going away. We all know that performance status can change dramatically once Indeed. we get the disease under control. So let that be a dynamic process. Right. It may be, let's say that your patient walks in and they are in decent enough shape, they're young enough, they're fit enough, they don't have you know many in the way of comorbidities. Let's assume they're going to be transplant eligible. In today, 2024, the answer is quadruplet therapy. We assume these patients are going to probably be eligible for transplant, and that is a whole other discussion. But to get the ball rolling, four drugs now with a phase three randomized trial comparing to three drugs and a phase two comparing four drugs to three drugs have both shown us that the four drugs win. So now we are incorporating into our standard LEN, bortezomib, DEX, triplet, the addition of that CD38 monoclonal antibody with daratumumab specifically, which has been studied so far, as and Perseus and Griffin, have shown us that four drugs do better, both from overall response rate, depth of response rate, and progression-free survival benefit. So your average person who we think is going to be transplant eligible should all be treated with four different drugs now. For patients who don't, however, are, are not intended to go to transplant, you think they're too sick, they're too ill, then are really the standard of care as it stands today has been based on the Maya study. This was originally designed to compare three drugs versus two drugs with that addition of daratumumab to that Lendex backbone. Now, we know from the SWOG trial just, I guess, a decade ago already <laughs> that three drugs is better than two. The question is, is, what is the right three? And these are for our older, frailer patients. And Dara Lendex has proven to be probably the most practice-changing approach for older, frailer myeloma patients uh, because it's tolerable. Um, these patients can really stay on these therapies for longer periods of time. Now, that's not to say, however, that if you have an older but even somewhat fitter patient, you can probably get quadruplet therapy in there as well. And I do push it a little bit for my older, fitter, and certainly my older, fitter, higher risk patients. I try to see if I can do what we call the old DARA RVD light, where <laughs> same concept, use the four right. drugs, but dose escalate to some degree just to improve tolerability and kind of durability of response. 
Caitlin, thank you so much. Dialing the clock back, even be it Dara, RVD Lite, or when we are thinking of using Bortezomib, most of us are using it by we uh, are using it weekly now. There are very few cases for us to consider uh, biweekly dosing. So I think that's important. Coming back to this patient, when you are deciding your quad therapy, who are you picking? Uh, bortezomib for versus carfilizumab. If you are going to pick carfilizumab, are you getting a baseline echo? If they don't have any cardiac history, what's your uh, paradigm or what's your work up there? Great question. So again, you know, carfilzomib has been compared to bortezomib in the relapse refractory setting, kind of head to head to prove superiority of it in the relapse setting. But really, it has not been compared in a way that has proven to us that carfilzomib is a better drug. That said, we still are sure that it probably is, right? So many of us have looked at phase two non-randomized trials, looking at the combination of DARA, carfilzomib, LEN, DEX, um, Manhattan, MASTER. These are different trials that are designed for newly diagnosed upfront patients patients and seeing that carfilzomib can overcome some of those high risk features. So that's where my fork in the road is. So someone with high risk features that is transplant eligible, I will choose carfilzomib. So those are your 17p deleted patients. Those are your 414s, your 1420s, your 1416s, 1Q amplifications. You know, those are the patients we really want to try and pursue. I do not do echocardiograms across the board for all patients starting out with carfilzomib. If there is something in their history that concerns me, it's never wrong to do. I think I think the single most important thing when starting carfilzomib for anybody is get that blood pressure under control because one of the most common things we see is elevation of systemic uh, blood pressure.